The accompanying table lists the attribute ratings made by a random sample of participants in a speed dating session. It says each attribute rating is the sum of the ratings of five attributes. Okay. Use a 0.05 significance level. That's our alpha. Test the claim that there is a difference between female and male ratings. So we just want to see if there is a difference. And we have what's called paired data. So our null hypothesis is always mu sub d equals zero. And our alternative hypothesis, well, it just says, is there a difference? So all we do is change it to not equal to. And now we can go to StatCrunch to get the test statistic, which is step two, and the p-value, which is step three. So what we do is we click on this, and then here we have the attribute ratings. So what 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 is mu sub d? Let me explain it one more time. So if you do 33 minus 26, you, you get a number, you get uh, 7. If you do 27 minus 44, you get another number. These numbers that you get when you subtract, they're called the Ds. The Ds are a sample, right, because this is a sample, so therefore the numbers that you get when you subtract are also a sample. Samples come from populations. Mu sub D is the population mean of the Ds. So for us to say it's equal to 0 means that on average these numbers are the same. For us to say it's not equal to zero means that these numbers are different. The question wants to know if the numbers are different, and that's why we ch changed it to not equal to. So now we'll click on this little box and click Open in StatCrunch. And then we go to Stat, T, and it's always paired. You'll know it's paired uh, whenever it says paired in the problem, uh, whenever you have dependent data. So, so pick the males, pick the female and then leave it at not equal to, click compute, and there it is, there's our t, our t is really, really big, so t is, well, not big, but, sorry, the p-value is really big, I meant 0.3486, and the p-value is huge, it's a really, really big p-value, 0.7281. So step four, we have to decide whether to reject or fail to reject, it's a definite fail, right? The p-value is smaller than alpha, we reject. If it's bigger, we fail to reject HO. And then step five is our interpretation. So in this case, we start by mentioning the level of significance. So at the 5% level of significance, And it's bigger than alpha, so we fail to reject, right? So whenever you reject, there is. Fail to reject, there is not. There is not sufficient evidence. To claim that there is a difference, that there is a difference. Right, the question wanted to know if there was a difference. So if we reject HO, then there is enough evidence to say there's a difference. If we fail to reject, there is not enough evidence to say there is a difference. Um, so let's go ahead and answer the question here. So this is an equals, and this is a zero. So it's interesting, it's making us type it in. Not equal to, and zero. Let's try it. Good stuff. The test statistic, it's two decimals, so 0.35, right? Kind of a weird number. Well done. Giant p-value, 0.728. It wants three decimals. Good job. Since the p-value is greater than the significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a difference. Let's try it. And that's it. I hope that made sense.